Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are going to talk about cycles and glass. And before you turn off because you are not a cycles user, I think you can benefit from the knowledge in there no matter what render engine you're using. So let me explain. When I started out with Blender, I got a lot of comments that cycles basically is inferior in rendering glass, especially compared to Octane. And while in some aspects that might be true, for example, Octane has nested dielectrics and dispersion and some other stuff that's in there, Cycles isn't that bad. And today we are going to explore all the settings in Cycles to make glass look nice and therefore go over stuff like caustics that can be also beneficial to understand and know in other renderers. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's get started. Let's have a look what we're going to do today. So this is basically our master scene that's also downloadable on Patreon. This is a rather simple scene. So if we go outside of our camera, you can see it's basically just an HRI plus a light source that is mostly directed to the backdrop to get those nice refractions and gradients in the glass going. So what we are going to do in the following is take up a new scene and then build this glass from scratch, not the modeling part, but the material, and then go over the settings and what you need to get the realistic behavior like this inside of Cycles. And obviously we are going to talk about caustics and also how to avoid long render times. And if you don't need the caustics, have something like in Octane with the fake shadow options that we are going to do ourselves in Cycles because Cycles does not have a tick for fake shadows. So let's jump in and get going. Welcome to our development scene. So this is very similar to the scene we looked at before. So we have an HGRI as well as a light source. And if I go inside of the light source, you can see that we have a round shape here created by the gradient texture as well as the color ramp. And this helps us to get a soft, nice reflection on the glass later on. Speaking of the glass, let's actually create the object. So shift A and actually create a cylinder. Now I already typed in the values I'd like here. So the radius is 50 and the depth is 100. I want to move it up so it doesn't intersect with the floor. So grab set and then go with a value of 51 because 50 would be exactly the floor plane and with glass, we don't want to have polygons intersecting. Obviously, what we also want to do is get this shaded smooth. So right click, shade auto smooth, and then give it a little bit of a bevel because that always looks better on glass. So let's go to the bevel modifier here, add modifier, bevel, here we go, and make the edge here a little bit smaller. So five, for example, and then give it six segments. Here we go. So now we have our base object done. Let's actually create our class material by going to materials and click new. This is our principled PSDF. Let's call it glass, glass. And then this is very simple to get into glass. So first of all, I want to get the roughness down to zero. So we have a totally glossy material. And then we go to the transmission and set it to one. So all the light can go through. There's one more thing to do, and this is very similar to Octane. So if we go to the base color, you can see it's set to 0.8. And this is basically the transmission color. So we can color our object on the wall where the ray is entering. And we don't want to give it any color. So what we need to do is get this to one. So really all of the energy that's there can interact with the refraction and therefore is more close to glass. When we look at this render, there are a couple of things that can be done better. And this is very similar to other renderers. So first of all, it's very noisy. Second, we have some black spots in the refractions. And thirdly, there is the caustics that are looking kind of weird. So let's try to fix this. Most of those can be solved with the render settings. So let's go there and have a look at our sampling first. The culprit for the noisiness here is the noise threshold in contrast to the max samples here. Because the noise threshold is telling cycles to stop rendering without even reaching the thousand samples gathered here. So what we can do here is go and set the threshold lower 
so all of our samples are used. We could get this even higher in the terms of sample counts, but let's leave it at this for now. By the way, I recently noticed that you have those symbols here, which lets you save presets. So we could do that right here. So that one, and then reuse it later on. Next, let's take a look at those black spots, which mean you don't have enough ray depth in your refraction. This is basically similar across all render engines. So those are usually set very conservatively and don't have enough ray depth for your class. So in cycles, what you need to do is go to light path, max bounces, and set the, for example, glossy depth to 12. And this makes the glass look much more realistic. Though, dependent on your object, you might even need higher ray depth. For example, there's a small speckle here that's still black. And if I raise the total amount to 24, then you can see it is also gone. So you might need a lot of ray depth for rendering proper glass. Before we go any further and fix our caustics, I want to talk to you about glass for a second. So basically, it's the product of its environment. What do I mean by that? Basically, if we look around, we don't see the glass itself. We see the reflections of the environment and also the refractions of the environment. So basically, all the glass object here is is showing us the environment in different ways. So in contrast to a diffuse object and similar to a chrome object, it is very dependent on its environment. So when lighting the scene, what I would take care of is not trying to light the object, but the environment around it. We will touch on that later, but now let's take care of the caustics. And I think exactly the settings that are set as default for caustics in cycles are the main culprit of people thinking cycles is not good for glass rendering. The reason this glass and therefore its caustics looking unrealistic is that cycles prefers unrealistic values to get faster rendering. So if we look down here, we have the clamping and the caustic filter glossy. So if we set the filter glossy to one, you can have back your nice sharper caustics. And basically what filter glossy is doing, if you are familiar with Octane, there is a caustic blur and this is exactly the same in cycles. It makes the object look blurry for the caustic rays. So basically if I go and set up my roughness to be a higher value, then you can see that our caustics act the same as with the filter glossy turned higher. Then the other part of the equation is the indirect light and this cups off the energy of indirect rays. So if I make this a lot higher, so for example 500, you can see now the intensity of our caustics is as high as it should be because it was clamped to a value of 10 before. What you also can see, and this is also the reason why the standard or the default settings in cycles isn't that way. Now we get a lot more noise in our scene because caustics are inherently hard to render. I have a video on rendering caustics and why it is hard to render if you're interested in the upper right corner. Okay, before we continue with our fake shadows material, Let's actually go over the point we've learned so far. First of all, glass needs a lot more samples than, for example, diffuse materials. Also, its ray depth can be a lot higher to render it properly without black spots in there. Then, glass is a product of its environment, so you have to get the environment right to make the glass also look right. And last but not least, Glass also means caustics because light is refracting through the glass, which then casts caustics. And therefore you need to find the right settings in order to make it look realistic. And this is very universal. It doesn't matter what renderer you're using. This is always how realistic glass is perceived and how it's working. Welcome to Cinema for D Land. This is a small side quest to discuss the fake shadows option here. But since we are here, let's also compare it against cycles. So the GI clamp here in the Octane settings is basically our indirect clamp. So if we set it to a lower value, the same thing happens. So our caustics get clamped and therefore are not as strong. 
And also we have the caustic blur, which is the filter Gaussian cycles. So if we get that higher, we can see we get the same blurred caustics there too. But sometimes the occasion arises that we don't need caustics at all. Basically, if we are not having something sitting on a table or if our light is very big and soft, then we can avoid rendering caustics and therefore there's the fake shadows option here. Now, for this lighting situation, it looks a bit strange. So what I want to do is turn off the environment and make our octane light a little bit smaller here. So we can see we are having those shadows now. And basically what's happening here is you are probably all familiar with the Fresnel equation. So that means that on the edges of an object where we are looking at the grazing angles, the reflection is a lot higher. And if we turn our camera to look at the same perspective as our light, you can see this coincides with the shadow. So the more energy there's going away for the reflection, the less energy there is for the light penetrating through the object. And therefore the rims of the object are darker than the middle of the object, which lets light through quite a lot. So now that we are familiar with those principles, let's actually go back into cycles and recreate this shader inside of there. Welcome back to Cycles Land. Now this is the nerdy part here. So what we want to do is basically get rid of the shadows as well as the caustics. So there is a transparent BSDF where we can get rid of stuff. Let's bring this up and don't mix that up with the translucent BSDF because this is doing something else. And then plug that in and we can see nothing is visible anymore. So what we want to do is mix those both shaders based on some criteria on some rays. So let's actually bring in the mix equivalent. So let's go and mix and go with the mix shader. So what we need to do is plug that into the top and the transparent to the bottom and then go and set this as a surface. Now what we have here is a factor in which we can mix. So zero is just our old behavior, the glass material, and one is completely transparent. So instead of using a factor, what we want to do is use some rays. So there's a light path node. Here we go. This is also called ray switch, for example, in Redshift or Octane. And this gives us a plethora of different rays. So what we can do is say, okay, everything that is a shadow ray sees this one material that is transparent. So let's try this and go there. And yes, it worked. So we have no shadow anymore. So just to compare, this is our normal material and this is the one with our shadows gone. If you look here, you can see the caustics though are still there. So we need to get rid of them as well. The caustics are part of the diffuse ray. So if I go to the diffuse ray and plug it in here, then the caustics are gone, but our shadows are back. What we can do is two mix shaders beyond each other, or we can use some math. So let's go for the math option because this is the nerdy part. Here we go, math. And it's already set to the right value, so it's additive. So we want to add both of those together and then feed it in here. And what do you know? We don't have any shadows and also no caustics. I'm very happy to announce, welcome to chart time. Although this chart is stolen from a older caustics tutorial, this might be helpful for you to understand what we just did. So for ray tracing, we shoot rays through our camera into the scene and then they are doing a bunch of stuff, but we are interested in shadow rays. So when a camera ray hits a diffuse object, then a probing shadow ray is sent to the light if it is touching another object in between, then this point will be a shadow. If it goes through and reaches the light, then of course it will be lit by the light. So what we did in our example is we explicitly talked to the shadow ray and say, hey, ignore the usual material here, which is glass on this object and see this object as a transparent object so whenever we have a shadow ray shooting through the object to the light, it will hit the light because it doesn't see the object here. 
what we can do next is give our object a Fresnel. So for the shadow rays, the more it looks at an angled surface, the darker it gets. So let's go back to cycles and do this next. Back to cycles, I cleaned up our node tree a little bit. So when we go down to our translucent BSDF, what I was talking about, we can make this slightly darker and therefore get a obstacle in for our shadow rays again. So a shadow is forming. Now this is uniform for the whole object, but we want to get the Fresnel equation going in here. So instead of going with a color, we want to get a Fresnel node in here. So what we can do is get a layer weight node going. So layer, here we go. And this has a Fresnel as well as a facing. Now there's a problem with the Fresnel. So usually this has to be inverted in here. So let's do this right away. So because otherwise the Fresnel is white at the edges, which we don't like, we want to have black at the edges. And you can see it's sort of working, but the shadow is much too strong. And this is because the Fresnel here is also computing the internal reflection, which we don't want. So what we can do is go with the facing here. And this is getting us a little bit closer to what we actually want. So what we can do here is go to the light and make the light a little bit smaller. So 25 here. And you can see this is sort of what we want. And you can go with the blend and therefore get exactly the look that you want to achieve. And this is looking very similar to what we had in Octane. Now there's an even more accurate way to do that. I'm not going to go over that right now, but it's a series of notes that I'm going to paste in here. So what we can do is now get this in here and therefore have a very accurate Fresnel that we can depict here. And if you want to know how I did that and what this is doing, this can be helpful in a lot of situations. Write it down in the comments down below so I can go over it in an extra tutorial. Welcome to this last chapter in which we bring our glass shader home by giving it some color as well as some imperfections. Now for this, what I want to do is bring back our caustics because this is sitting on a surface and it's looking much better with it. So actually what I wanted to do before is just show you how to get the fake shadow shader inside of cycles. So let's delete this and let's go on from there. So let's go about coloring our glass. And if you remember the start of the video, I tinkered around in here, but this is not the best way to do that. I also have a video on Octane, which is called coloring glass realistically. And I go over the exact same thing in there too. So what this is doing is coloring the rays when they enter and leave the material, but glass usually is colored through the volume. So this is best left pure white. So to do this, we are searching for volume, shift A, volume, here we go. And then there's the absorption volume or volume absorption, how it's called here. And we then black that into the volume slot. Now this is doing nothing because our color is white right now. So let's go for a greenish tint like glass usually has. And then if we don't see anything, this is because our scene is very small. So we have to up the intensity, for example, to 15. And now you can see something here. In the example with our cocktail glass, you can see that on the thicker parts, there's more coloring because the light has to travel through more of the volume than on the thinner parts. And this is exactly like real glass behaves. As a last part of the shading, what I want to do is give the glass some lifelike characteristics and imperfection. So if you're looking through a glass, put it near your eyes and turn it, you can see everything is wobbling. And this is because the surface is not perfect. So I want to mimic that with a noise inside of the displacement. So I want to get a displacement here. And the reason I'm using displacement is that I have better experiences with using that. And it's not actually doing a displacement unless you turn it on. Otherwise, it's just creating a bump from the input here. So this is what I'm doing. Let's create a noise because this is the easiest way to get some wobble on the surface. So here we go. And then pipe it into the height of the 
displacement. Now let's go into the noise and see what we have here. And if you don't know what I did just now is shift control clicking on a note and this is with the note wrangler enabled. This is some of the add-ons that come with Blender. You just have to enable it. And then what we need to do is get the scale a little bit larger, something like that. And then go and look at the material once more. Obviously this is much too strong. So we need to get the scale down here. So 0 0.0002 or 0005 is good. So you can see we have some little wobbles inside of here especially if we see some of the highlights. You can see that maybe I can make it a little bit stronger, so 0.002, and therefore it's looking much more lifelike and what you have in your real world if you're looking through class. Of course, you can polish that and get this a lot more dialed in, but this is it for now. You can see it's looking much more organic and therefore much more realistic. As a last step before closing off this tutorial, I want to honor my own words in which I said that the glass is the product of its environment and therefore create a better environment for the glass. So what I especially want to do is go to the light, hit the N for the N panel and then move it down here. So it rather lights the backdrop. So something like that, for example. And if we look at our glass, we get this really nice gradient that makes it come alive. Also, what I want to do is go and zoom out again and then for the whole of our backdrop, color that in a little bit. So I already prepared that. So it's coloring a gradient along the UVs of our backdrop. So this is going from blue to orange. So if I zoom back in again, this is giving even more life to our object here. Now, last but not least, when we go to our render settings here and move down, we can go to the color management. Obviously, I would render that as an EXR so I can do all of that in post, but you can also go for a high contrast to give the whole object more oomph. And last, last but not least, what we need to do is get our samples higher to clean up this part especially. So let's go for 4,000 samples here and let it finish up. And this is basically our glass tutorial. And you can see this glass is looking rather nice. Also, if you are coming from other render engines, thank you for staying with us and staying within cycles and see what I do here. Because I think this is one-to-one -one applicable to other render engines as for example, Octane or Redshift or Arnold. You just have to deal with different ways to get caustics. It's very similar in Octane, but it's different in Redshift. For the overall class, it follows the same rules and therefore you can get there easily. And this is it. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked the universal approach of doing something. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked it or if you have other ideas. I will start with my material series probably next week where I go over the thoughts and the process of creating materials. Now, let me thank those people who make all of this possible, which are obviously my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. I can only repeat myself and really thank you for your massive support. Also, my 15 euro tier subscribers Render King Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Bavana, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Blus Academy, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Just a Fricken, Chris Clemson, Ludger, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quark Andang, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shamus Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, Vitar Terjeson, Yasin Rup, and Shibor Shang. Welcome to our After Clapper discussion round. 
Thank you so very much if you're still watching. I really appreciate it. I have the feeling this week there isn't much to say. As always, leave your comments down below and tell me where to go, what direction you want to get in. I'll get into materials hopefully next week. There's a little bit of preparation time involved, so I initially wanted to start this week, but then I needed a little bit too long for the preparation, so I needed to squeeze in the cycles glass. If you want to, you can show your support with a, of course, cocktail emoticon, because this is very fitting for this week's scenario. Other than that, again, I wish you a great start into the week, a fantastic week, and happy glassmaking. Bye.